Hello everybody, welcome to a new tutorial from Sound for More It's Lear Speaking. Today we continue our journey in learning SynthMaster 2 and we are going to cover in particular key scalars. But before I do that, I would like to first remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. And uh, also I'm going to do a small introduction or addition to sequences as since my last video, a few things have been added to uh, SynthMaster 2. So I have initialized the presets and let's activate filters. Okay, that's nice. Let's go to the sequencer. Let's modulate that frequency using a sequencer number one. Let's decrease slightly the volume. So the intensity modulation to the frequency. And let's add a why not a filter two. Okay, let's change the number of step to four and the loop start from step number two and let's maximize the window. Let's increase slightly the speed. Okay, let's change step number two. So the shape is different. Now, what they have added is the ability to do a couple of things to steps which you didn't have before. So underneath each step, you can click and you can now insert a normal step or you can insert a up step or uh, a down step. Very nice indeed. And of course, you can remove them, so you can select and uh, delete steps, like so. And more importantly, what they have added is the ability to change the duration uh, or the length of, of each step. So let's act on step two, three, four. So on number two, we say step length, instead of being one, which is what we have by default, we half it. So the duration is half and therefore it will repeat the same step twice to ensure that there is no differences in the length of the sequence. So we go to the next step and we say one third. And on the last one, why not? We set it to one fourth. So it gives you the ability to create um, better sequences is um, similar to the ratchet functionality that you find in other application. Okay, so I hope that was useful. So let's initialize the preset again, change the volume roughly there, re-enable the filters. Why not? Let's also add a little bit of an effect. Let's give it a bit of reverb, just decrease the mix. Sounds nice. Yeah. Okay, so <clears throat> let's go to key scalars now. As you can see, you have this linear or this line going up or ascending, and then you have a representation below of keys which correspond to the keyboard. Indeed, if I press C3 here, you see a vertical line highlighted there, so roughly uh, exactly there. If I press C5 here, it alights this part here. So practically, my keyboard covers between this point to this point. And if I press key here, it will modulate whatever is the target for the key scalar with the value that is represented on the graph, what you can see at the moment. So let's say that at that point in time, we add a point like so. Maybe we add another one there. Maybe you can remove a point, by the way, if you click again on the same, but I instead I want to add another one, and why not? Um, let's add another one like so. Sometimes if you, if you are closer to the point, it will not allow you to, um, to just add another one. So you have to move them slightly. So let's do something like that. And let's reduce here so it keeps the same level more or less. Okay, there you go. So what happens here? Have a look. So as you move towards this key here, so roughly F sharp, you start to go up the curvature and then it keeps this value the same and then it starts to go down here on F sharp again. So we have to assign this key scalar to something instead of assigning it just to directly to a frequency of a filter as I normally have done in other tutorials. I'm going to say that that frequency or cutoff is modulated by LFO number one. Then I'm going to LFO 
and I'm going to decrease slightly the speed and add to the speed the key scale one. So let's have a look what happens. So it's still modulating, and as you can see, there is also an added modulation to the speed of LFO. But as I progress up, you can see the speed of changing the frequency cutoff has increased significantly, because, and you can see it on the dial as well. This has gone to maximum, right? So um, what I'm going to do is reduce again the speed. So it is very useful, therefore, to create effects and specific range of notes. Depending on the frequency of notes, you have quite uh, interesting effects. And now from here, you know, you can extend it as you like. So something I normally like to do is to copy the settings there, go to scalar number two, and to paste the setting there, so have the same curvature. Then perhaps let's add to the resonance uh, um, LFO number two. Then let's go to LFO and select LFO number two. And... Um, Let's do the same thing on speed and uh, less on volume. So on speed, we add that uh, key scalar number two. So hopefully this tutorial was useful. Now you know how to use key scalars and you would agree with me that um, between different type of synthesis, ADSR, multi-segments, LFO, sequencer, key scalars, and we haven't covered yet the arpeggio in sequencer, gosh, uh, Synthmaster 2 is definitely a powerhouse. Okay, see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye.